Okay, and tell me about your relationship with Emma Harris. Emma was a very dear friend and um, helper very early in, in, she had been to university and um, came out of university at, I think, 1974 and 75 or somewhere there. So she joined me, um, she wrote to me, asked me, you know, tell me about herself and so on, and she'd like to sort of re really uh, be part of the company. Mm -hmm. And I welcome her because um, she had the skill and she had the, the, you know, the sort of strength and vitality to sort of really work. And she was not afraid of doing anything, you know. At that time, she had studied uh, at, um, in Dominica, but she's also studied at Windsor University mm -hmm. in the theater arts program. And she got her Bachelor of Education at UFT. And um, so she was well capable of, of being a very useful, helpful, wonderful person and she helped me I I in the times that uh, we really needed that kind of help that strength mm -hmm. you know the organization yes it was founded by me but I have to thank people like Amar mm -hmm. you know uh, and all the other people who sort of helped in workshopping mm -hmm. um, Amar actually was very responsible for the school tours that we had Okay. Um, Black Theatre Canada had a, a whole group of young people, mm -hmm. and Amar took care of all of them. We're talking about people from four years old. Wow. You know? That's a big job. Yes. <laughs> yes, you well and, that, and that was her job. She wrote yeah. stories. She did a Nancy Productions. Yeah. The Nancy Stories is well known in, in the Caribbean, yeah. you know, to attract children and so on. And it was the first time that, um, that the... the, the black ch children in, in, in the Toronto schools ever saw anything yeah. that they could identify with, you know. And right. they were so, the other day I met a woman, and I think she, she's about um, 38 or something. She says, you know, I remember people coming into the schools and doing a Nancy she, when she was like, you yeah. know, <laughs> five or something like yeah. this, you know. And I said, that was us. Yeah. Yeah. That was us. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And this is how, because this was before, you know, um, all the, the Eddie Murphy movies and before, hmm. you know, a lot of the, the stuff, the, the Bill Cosby show or whatever. This is at a time when... Yeah, there, there was nothing to identify with. Mm -hmm. There would be before the Bill Cosby, before, yeah. you know, uh, there wasn't even Sesame Street on, I, I don't think, <laughs> at that point, you know, for the children. It's true, as a matter of yeah. fact, yeah. And, and <coughs> So images for children, because I remember as a kid, you know, being, looking for just any representation. Like watching the Little Rascals going, oh, there's a black kid on the Little mm -hmm, Rascals, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like, and alfalfa, and, and yes. you know, regardless of how, you know, ridiculous is the, the character or the stereotype yeah. was, it was just, he was a black kid. Yes, <laughs> in a yes, show. yeah, so and, and you say, oh, representation. oh. I know, exactly. So yeah. whenever you saw anything, it was... Yes. It sort of helped to uh, 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 it helped to make your experience less lonely, you know. Oh yes, yeah. y you felt oh, I'm all right, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah, it's not just like just to see one face. Mm -hmm. you, you know, know? it's not like I'm an oddity that's or something, right, you know. That's or something. right. So let's take a look at this, which is a folder. Uh, this is a uh, sort of a collection of. Black Theatre Canada in perspective that uh, Ten years. that I somehow got my hands on, <laughs> and um, we've got some amazing pictures of Amarita, Marencia, and uh, some people. But I want to talk about. Let's see. If there's a picture of your very first show. Let's see. The name of your very first show. Malfini. Yeah, Malfini. There it is with Arden Bess. I don't know if you can. Zoom in on this. I, I'll try to hold it really still. Mm -hmm. Malfini is right here, and then there's a picture of Arden right there, looking very young. Mm -hmm. He was a child then, wasn't he? <laughs> we all were. We're as a matter of fact. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Now, talk to me about the uh, the creation of Malfini and how how you chosen. How what what were some of your thoughts about this being your first show? 
Uh, Roderick Walcott, who was then in Toronto, um, he was at York University. I think he was teaching at York University. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I was looking for a play mm -hmm. that is written by a Caribbean person or Canadian black person mm -hmm. that we can relate to, that it's possible to do. Roderick um, had this play mm -hmm. and, and he had some others as well, but... Um, and Roderick is from a, I mean, he's got some writing in his blood. Oh, yes. Because of his family, yes. of course. Writing, as, yeah. as well as um, directing. That's and right. he, he, he was the writer of Malcolm, but he also directed the show. That's yeah. true. And, and he also, I'm sure that he, he would want to be known for his own work, but he also has a, a sibling who is somewhat yes, well known. Yes, he was twin to Derek Walcott. That's right. Yeah. yeah. He was a Nobel Prize winner of mm -hmm. one of the years, anyway. Mm -hmm. And um, they're both writers of, of great stature. Yeah. stature. Yeah. Yeah. And so talk to me about how you discovered this play and how you discovered him. I discovered... Um, Derek, not Derek, but uh, uh, because Derek was not here, mm -hmm. Roderick was here. But we knew, I knew of these two men mm -hmm. who were twins and, and they were very well known by all the Caribbean people because they used to provide and produce um, all the, the plays that ever went on in St. Lucia. I had family in St. Lucia. Right. And uh, so when, when he came to live in... Toronto, mm -hmm. um, and I heard that he was here. I think I called him, mm -hmm. and he was delighted to sort of say, "Yes, you are the same person that is doing Black Theatre Canada," you know. Right, right. And we made a connection. Mm -hmm. And uh, by then, I had not done a, prof a, a, a professional theatre production at all. Wow. Um, I had done some workshops. I, ha I had only done, you know, teach some kids and so on. Mm -hmm. and, and he said, well, you know, I could probably, you know, do some things with you. Mm -hmm. And we had no funding and that sort of thing. It was very, very the first, the first to be, you know. Mm -hmm. So I explained to him how, how it is in Canada, you know. Right. And that um, we, he said it doesn't matter. And Roderick was, he, he's a pioneer too. Mm -hmm. Because he was one of the people that said, look, we will just do it. Yeah. We will do it. We'll get it done. Yeah. And it's, it was a large cast. And, and that, that kind of, um, it, it bothered me a bit, but, but it, was, it was the thing to do. Mm -hmm. Because what we were doing was more than theater. Yeah. We, we were not just um, producing theater. We were not able to, to sort of do that. And it is, was important for us to involve young people, to train them, mm -hmm. to encourage them to follow their dream, to follow, you know, their gift. Mm -hmm. And we, we did not have Canadian Idol at that time. <laughs> we did not have the American Goodness. Idol. You're very you lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was very important that, that the kids be encouraged mm -hmm. and say, listen, you, you can do this. It's okay, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, there was, there was no encouragement for them. There was no avenue. There was no platform mm -hmm. for, for, for the actors, nor the dancers, nor the writers, nor anyone. Mm -hmm. and, and so Black Theatre Canada had this, this sort of um, extra sort of um, assignment on, on its backs right. to, to sort of not just in, in, you know, do artistic productions or stuff like that, but pay attention to the people who are, are just, you know, waiting for help, mm -hmm. you know, and the young people and so on. And Roderick was very sensitive to that. Right. And, and um, he understood that. <coughs> and decided to just come and help. He designed his own sort of stuff and he, he was a great person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very, very uh, talented. I remember him drawing the costumes, you know, uh, and, and um, it's amazing. Yeah. I think I have some at home. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah. I'd love to see them. Yes. 
What? Tell me more about what he was like as a person. Tell me more like his temperament. And, uh, and he, he was very quiet, mm -hmm. very very quiet, and um, just just concerned with getting the job done, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and not not a person who you know is is outgoing and, and flaunts himself a, a lot. No, yeah. he he was sort of like um, a quiet person. And, and more more concerned with. I don't know if it's because he was a twin, and, and Derek sort of took the, the limelight right, right. more than himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, could be something like that. Yeah. But because Derek was sort of stronger. Right. Yeah. Right. So he chose to be understated and probably got more powerful, you know, attention mm -hmm. that way.